Welcome to a lesson on the area between two curves. For review, if f of x is non-negative, then the def integral of f of x integrated with respect to x from a to b would give us the area bounded by the function and the x-axis. So looking at our graph here, if we integrated this blue function from zero to six, notice how the function is non-negative on this interval, and therefore the def integral would give us the area of the shaded region. So to find the area bounded by two curves, we just extend this idea. If f of x and g of x are continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and g of x is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the interval, then the area of the region bounded by the two graphs of f and g and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is given by the def integral of f of x minus g of x integrated with respect to x from a to b. So one of the most important things to recognize here is that when we set this up, f of x must be the top function and g of x must be the bottom function. So looking at our graph over here on the right, if we wanted to find the area bounded by these two functions or the area of this blue shaded region, if we began by considering the points of intersection which are here and here, Notice how if we found the area under the quadratic function over this interval and then subtract the area and then subtract the area under the linear function over the same interval, notice how it would leave us with the area of this blue shaded region, the area bounded by the two curves. So to find the area bounded by two intersecting curves, we will need to calculate the points of intersection by setting the two functions equal to each other. The upper and lower limits of integration will be determined by the points of intersection, looking at the graph on your calculator or some other graphing software is often very helpful. And sometimes we may have more than two points of intersection. Let's take a look at an example. Here's the graph we considered on the previous slide where we want to find the area bounded by y equals two x, which is graphed here in red, and y equals six x minus x squared, graphed here in blue. So again, we're trying to find the area of this blue shaded region so the first step is to determine the points of intersection. And because we have the graph, we can tell this point of intersection would be the origin, zero comma zero, and this point of intersection would be the point four comma eight. So notice how we will be integrating from zero to four. But let's also find these points of intersection algebraically. To do this, we would set the two functions equal to each other, so we'd have two x equals six x minus x squared. Notice how we have a quadratic equation, so we'll set it equal to zero and see if we can factor. So we'll subtract two x on both sides. Six x minus two x is four x. And notice how this does factor. We have a common factor of x, so we have x times the quantity four minus x. So this would equal zero when x equals zero or when four minus x equals zero. So here if we add x on both sides, we have four equals x or x equals four, and here we already know x equals zero. So this does verify our limits of integration will be from zero to four. So the area can be equal to the integral of here we'll have the top function minus the bottom function. So notice how we have the quadratic function minus the linear function. So we'd have six x minus x squared minus a linear function is y equals two x integrated with respect to x from zero to four. Let's go ahead and simplify the integrand. Here we have six x minus two x, that's four x. Now we'll find the antiderivative. So we'd have four times, that's x to the first, so we'd have x to the second divided by two minus x to the third divided by three. Let's continue on the next slide. Simplifying here we have two x squared. Let's write this as minus one third x to the third. So when x is four, we have two 
times four squared minus one-third times four cubed. I notice when x is zero, both terms are zero. So here we have four squared is sixteen times two, that's thirty-two. Minus, here we have one-third times four to the third, or sixty-four thirds. Obtaining a common denominator, which would be three. We have ninety-six thirds minus sixty-four thirds, or thirty-two thirds, as the area bounded by these two curves, which is this blue shaded region. Let's take a look at another example. We want to find the area bounded by y equals x and y equals five x minus x cubed. So we're trying to find the area of these two shaded regions. Notice how these two functions do have three points of intersection. And also on the left, the linear function is on top and the quadratic is on the bottom. And on the right, the quadratic function is on top and the linear function is on the bottom. Which means to find these two areas, We'll have to set up two separate integrals. However, in this case, because of the symmetry of the two areas, we could find one of the areas and then just double the area. But just in case we didn't have symmetry, I do want to set this up as two separate integrals. And again, looking at the graph, we can tell that the points of intersection would be negative two comma negative two here, the origin zero comma zero here, and the point two comma two here. But again, I do want to verify the x-coordinates of these points of intersection algebraically first by setting these two functions equal to each other. So to do that algebraically, we would have when is x equal to five x minus x cubed. If we subtract x on both sides, we'd have zero equals four x minus x cubed. And this does factor, common factor of x again, leaving us with x times the quantity four minus x squared. Here we have a difference of squares. So we have x and then we have two binomial factors. Four is a perfect square, we'd have two times two. x squared is a perfect square, we'd have x and x. And we'd have a sum and a difference. So this product equals zero when x equals zero, x equals negative two, or x equals positive two. Notice how these are the x-coordinates of the point of intersections, which will give us the limits of integration. So again, finding these areas separately and not using the symmetry, we would have the area of the bounded region is equal to the integral of, on the left, we have the linear function on top, the quadratic on the bottom, so we would have x minus the quantity five x minus x cubed, integrate with respect to x from negative two to zero, and then plus the integral of, on the right, the quadratic's on top, so we would have the quantity five x minus x cubed minus x, integrate with respect to x from zero to two. And again, because of the symmetry, we could find one of the areas and then just double that value. But let's go ahead and solve it this way. So next we'll simplify the integrands. So here we have x minus five x, that would be negative four x. And then we have minus negative x cubed, that's plus x cubed, plus the integral from zero to two. Uh, this is just gonna be the opposite. We have five x minus x, that's four x and then minus x cubed. Let's continue on the next slide. So now we'll find the antiderivatives. So we'd have negative four times x squared divided by two plus x to the fourth over four, and then plus, here we have positive four times x squared over two minus x to the fourth over four. Let's go ahead and simplify these. So here we have negative two x squared, let's write this as plus one fourth x to the fourth. And here we'll have positive two x squared minus one fourth x to the fourth. 
So here we'll substitute zero first. Notice when x is zero, both terms are zero. And then when x is negative two, we'd have negative two times negative two squared plus one-fourth times negative two to the fourth. And then here, when x is two, we have two times two squared, and we have minus one-fourth, two to the fourth. And when x is zero, both terms are zero. So finally simplifying, we'd have negative, and then here we have positive four times negative two, that's negative eight. And here we'd have negative two to the fourth, that's sixteen, times one-fourth, that's four. And we have plus, here we have eight minus, again, sixteen times one-fourth is four, so we have eight minus four. So here we have the opposite of negative four, and then plus four, which is four plus four, or eight. So this area is four square units. This area is four square units. So the combined bounded area is eight square units. I hope you found this helpful.